Hello guys. Recently, I launched an After Effects script called Parallax to create parallax or two-point file D animation in an easy and non-destructive way. This is the first short tutorial about the basics of the script, and I hope you find it helpful. There's also a second tutorial in my channel about more tricks, but this one will cover the basics. So here's the effects for the first tutorial. As you can see, to achieve the parallax effect, the key is the foreground layer moves more and faster than the background layer. Actually, there are about 20 layers here. Each of them should move a certain distance based on how close they are from the camera. But how do we manipulate so many layers? If you do it manually, you'll be time consuming to make changes. But with Parallax, you can set up and control the thing really easily. Also notice there's a camera focus change to bring the depth of field. Parallax will also take care of that with easy controls. So first step is to install the script. Locate to the folder where you installed After Effects and navigate to Support Files, Scripts, Script UI Panels and put the parallax.jxxbin file there. So the installation is done. I'm using Windows, in case you are using Mac, it will be similar process. The path is shown here. OK, after the installation, let's get started. First of all, this script works for multiple layers in the composition. So the content will be the layers. It can be several images, or a PSD file from Photoshop, or AI file from Illustrator that contains multiple layers. I'll take the PSD file for example. Here I have a PSD file called Peter and Jason. If I open the file in Photoshop, you can find a scene with many layers. So I can move the layers around, I can hide some layers, and you can see the layouts better. Notice the layer is on top of each other, and I put them in order based on the distance the layers are from the, our eye or the camera. Because right now the layers are flattened, but later on we will put them in After Effects and give them distance in between. So the order would be important. But it doesn't matter uh, at this point, it doesn't have to be super accurate, uh, because the script will allow you to change the uh, layer order later. Also, I named the layers properly, that way, I, I can keep the file better organized. The other thing to keep in mind is if you want several layers to be on, the com on one composition, you need to create a folder and put multiple layers into it. For example, if you check the JSON folder, which is a weird poor little guy, you will find I put his body parts in one folder because I want them later on to be in one composition, and I don't want there's a distance, for example, between his legs or arms. I want him in one layer, in one composition. The last thing I personally found useful is to leave some artworks outside the frame, or don't chop them exactly the size of the frame. Here's what I mean. So you can see I didn't chop all the parts outside of the frame because I want to leave some space for the animation later on. So with the PSD file site, let's jump into After Effects. First thing I'm gonna to do is to go to Edit, Preference, General, and make sure Allow Script to Write Files and Access Network is checked. Then hit OK. Now you can go to Windows. Navigate to the bottom and select the parallax.jsxbin file. Then you got this two panel. Then go to File, Import, and find the PSD file. Make sure you have Composition, Retain Layers selected. Here you got the Composition. Double click it, you can see all layers now. 
Let's go through some of the presets in our script. The camera control will create a slider control at the effects control panel to control the camera if it is checked. That will be easy controls. But if it is unchecked, you use the traditional way to uh, control the camera. So you'll be using a non-object and uh, you got more freedom. That's the way most every effect users are using to uh, animate the camera. I personally, uh, I will use the traditional way, so I'll leave it unchecked. But here I will leave it checked uh, just for the tutorial purpose. The DOF means depth of field. If checked, the camera will have a focus point and the other parts will be blurred out. The trim composition is an option to have a pop-out box to trim the composition to a certain length. So select the composition in the project panel first, then hit the confirm button. 10 seconds is OK. Then all layers are set. Let me show you what was happened. Let's go to the top view of the camera. Here you can see all layers are offset evenly. And if you go to the first layer, the controller layer and check on the uh, check the effect control panel. You see the camera controls here. For example, the offset st strength controls the distance between the layers. Animation pine horizontal controls the camera's X position. You can see if I move it, the camera will move horizontally. The vertical controls the Y position and the zoom controls the Z position. Let's go back to the camera view and make a few adjustments here. First thing, I want to turn off the depth of field for a while. Then let's see. The layers are offset too much maybe. Uh, I will make the offset strength a, a, a bit smaller. How about 200? Notice some of the layers are pretty off from the others, like the trees and the second character JSON. That's because the folders in Photoshop, when imported into After Effects, it turns into a composition, and we need to turn off the Continue Rasterize button. Now better. What I need to do is to zoom in to fill the gap a little bit. OK. I'll keep making some adjustments, but the good part of the script is you can directly drag the layers to the position you want. For example, I want to move the bushes a little bit down. Or I want to scale up the um, background. I will speed up a little bit. But basically, you can move and scale the layers to make it look a bit natural without worrying about messing up with the Z position. They are still there. Here we go. Now I'm happy with the layout, I'll start the animation. Go to the controller layer, navigate to the controller panel, and then set the keyframe at the animation horizontal. Then hit U at the controller layer. Go to about one second, adjust the slider control to another keyframe, to get another keyframe. OK. Let's hit space. Let's trim the composition to the length of the animation and take a look. Let's go to the first frame, set the keyframe, and go to the last frame. 
and zoom in the camera by changing the by changing the value at the animation zoom slider control. So we got this animation zoom effect. Now I want to make it even interesting by turning on the depth of the field. You can see immediately, we can see the camera depth of the field. I can even make the aperture bigger to get the effect more obvious. Now, if I hit space, we can see the preview get depth of field. But here's the issue. I don't know where is the focus of the camera, and I actually want to control the focus. For example, with the controller layer selected, I'll hit U to, to see all the keyframes. Now I want to, uh, the focus to change from Peter to Jason. How do I do that? So staying at the first frame, select layer Peter. I'll hit focus at the two panel. You can see now Peter is unfocused. Now let's go to the last frame. Select Jason's layer. Hit focus again. Now Jason is unfocused at the last frame. If we preview the animation, you will notice the focus changed from Peter to Jason. Very cool. What if I change my mind and I want to reset the focus? I can always go to the reset button and click on it. Now all keyframes for the camera focus are removed. I can reset the focus animation now. Now I want to achieve a different effect, where a layer, for example, JSON, is always in on focus. One way to do this is to go to the controller layer in the effects control panel, choose the focus layer, and then check on the checkbox of autofocus. The other way is actually the same thing, is to select JSON layer in the composition, check on autofocus checkbox, and hit focus. Now, if I preview the animation, JSON will always be on focus no matter how the camera moves, and other layers will blur out. I want to increase the aperture a little bit and hit preview again. Now I got the animation. I'd love to introduce you some other features of this script. First thing is this little trash button. Right now, all images layers position and scale are linked to the controller layer through its presence. So if when we change the uh, settings of the controller layer, the, all the layers are moved in position and scale. For example, if I select the leaves and hit P, uh, with the shift key selected and uh, click S to bring up the scale, you can see they all linked to expressions. I got the uh, values in red color, means that there's expressions, by the way. But you can remove these expressions by selecting the layers and hit the trash button. Now these layers are no longer linked to the controllers, they are just like the, a normal layer. Of course, you can always go back by hitting uh, Ctrl Z. Another thing is the layer order. You may change the layer order by just dragging it, and you don't need to worry about messing up with the positions. For example, let's give the rock a red color so that we can see it more clear. I can move the bush to the back of the rock by just drag it under the rock layer. Or if I want to move the rock to the back, I can just drag the rock under the bushes. The position will update automatically, and I don't need to worry about setting the position again.
you can see how convenient it is to make changes. Then let's talk about the presets. If you didn't choose the camera control checkbox before you hit the confirm button, you'll get something like this. The bottom layer will not be locked. Then you won't have these three、um, camera controllers at the effects controls panel. But instead, you can use a non-object at the bottom called control camera control, and keyframe this non-object to control the camera layer. Does that looks familiar? Yes, that's the traditional way we use to control the camera. Maybe some After Effects users feel more comfortable using this way. The only difference is the camera controls create three slider controls that links to the position of the camera. Uh, so it is basically the same thing, but if you want to have more freedom to animate the camera, like rotating the camera a little bit, or you want to change the camera settings, or if you you get used to the traditional way to animate the camera、uh, with a non-object, you may choose not to check the camera controls at the preset pa- panel, but it is your choice. The last thing is. If you want to animate a character, you may use composition to hold these layers. For example, if I open the composition of Jason, you may find all individual layers. I can create animation inside the composition. For example, I can give a wiggle effect to the bubbles, or I can animate Jason a little bit. Cool. Hope you would like this script, and thank you again for purchasing and supporting Parallax. I've leave my personal email here, and if you have any questions, please send me an email, and I'll work on it asap. Thank you.